What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. It's time for a dip back into one of my earliest haunts as a YouTuber. It's one of the first games I ever played back in 2012 and it's Project Zomboid. If you've never played this game before, there is never a better time to get into it than now. Uh, the game did take like a big development hiatus for a couple of years just due to the fact that the developers got robbed. Uh, their studio got broken into and somebody stole the PCs that had all their source code or whatever on it. And so they were basically rebuilding from an old build on a laptop, which was all they had left after the doors got kicked in. A uh, big setback, but not necessarily the developer's fault. It kind of, it is what it is. It's kind of one of those act of God type deals. However, the game is back in full development as of about two years ago. Uh, two years ago, they started to really hit their stride where they had gotten the game back to where it was and they were starting to add new stuff. And I think the last time we checked in on the game was around the time of the combat update, which actually was fairly major. Like, this game is moving in a much more difficult direction. Uh, there was a time playing this game that I could basically play it with my eyes closed and last forever. Uh, the game has gotten far more difficult and, in fact, has a lot more in common with, like, Cataclysm DDA and other roguelikes than anything else at this point. Make no mistake, you are going to die a lot in Project Zomboid learning how to play it. Even when you're an experienced player, sometimes there's just like things you have no control over that end up taking you out and there's really no way to get around them. Like if you spend the first hour in game not being able to find a weapon, that's a, that's a problem and it's going to lead to a significantly higher chance of you dying. But if you've never seen this game before, this is a zombie apocalypse survival sandbox. Probably really one of the only true realism focused ones in the sense that there are no special infected. There is merely the horde. Like it's basically endless Dawn of the Dead style zombies and no matter how many you kill, there's always like another thousand right around the corner. And any safety that you manage to glean for yourself over the course of your playthrough you have to understand that that is completely and totally temporary. Eventually, they are all going to make a comeback. So anyways, we're going to dive on in today, take a look at it for about 30 minutes, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list. I can't advocate for this game enough. There are things with this game that frustrate me, but that's largely due to the fact that just, you know... I'm not good at games. It has nothing to do with the game itself. So anyways, let's dive on in. We'll start off solo. We're going to be playing on the default difficulty, which is Survivor. Uh, the game does allow you to build your own custom difficulty inside of custom sandbox right here. It also has challenge modes, uh, and then one of them is, you know, a lot of these are actually referencing modes that you can start out with in Cataclysm DDA. I get the, fa I get the feeling that the developers of this game are big fans of Cataclysm DDA, which, like, fair enough, Cataclysm DDA is rad, and it's free. So, you know, if you've got time, you should go play it. It's pretty sick. Uh, we'll go ahead and check this on out. There's four maps inside the game as of right now. This game is open source, meaning that it is moddable, and there are tons of fan maps. There are tons of fan mods that add all kinds of stuff to the game and make it much more interesting. For today, we are going to be playing on vanilla, which for me is interesting enough. Uh, we've got Moldraw. This is the classic map, the first one that they ever got implemented on into the game. Back when I used to play this game, Moldraw was one street. It was one tiny street, like like this one down here, and they were slowly adding pieces to it, basically. And there was, like, nothing along the borders. It was just kind of, like, empty space. Uh, and so, anyways, this is the classic map. You've got a highway that runs this way through Kentucky, and then you've got a big construction yard up here. You've got the main part of the city right around this little Main Street strip, and then you've got the outlying suburbs. You've got Riverside, which is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a small town. It's going to be a little bit harder to find resources due to the fact that this place is very, very limited in scope scale, but you do have a river, which means that you can fish for most of your needs when it comes to nutrition. So that's going to be one of the balancing mechanisms that happens right there. You've got Rosewood. Uh, Rosewood is also kind of a small-ish map that takes a little bit of getting used to. However, if you're looking for suburban paradise, this might be the place for you. And then there's West Point, which is another large map like Muldraw. It's kind of a hybrid uh, of kind of like Riverside and Muldraw. It's got the large sprawly area that Muldraw has, but it also has like a river running along the side of it. It's up to you which ones you want to play. All of the maps bring their own particular challenges. If you find that you don't like any one of these particular maps, after you start playing it, you see these little roads that lead off map. They will take you to the other maps. These maps are all interesting 
interconnected and you can travel in between them as you see fit. Although I would recommend that you get some wheels before you try to make that long trip. Let's go to next. We got to make our character. So this is where we're going to start building from the ground up. And there's a great number of kind of like background professions that you can go with. What a lot of people don't realize about this is that like, yes, these do determine your beginning stats and bonuses, but they also determine where you're going to spawn on the map. So for example, the construction worker on Moldraw, he will spawn inside the trailer park. The carpenter will spawn out in the country kind of to the east of the trailer park. Uh, I think the park ranger, he spawns like out in kind of a little wooded area with a bunch of like kind of two-story suburban houses out in the country. Like it just, it depends who you're playing, but you'll spawn at different locations based on what class you pick. And, and so sometimes it can be worth playing around with them and trying a new class just to see where they spawn at and see if they spawn in a spot that you like. Because for me, like for example, I really, really dislike some of the spawns. Like some of the spawns, I just, I don't find them to be advantageous. They're kind of rough. And so sometimes if I'm not in the mood for a balls-to-the-wall gameplay experience, I will remove my balls from the, the wall-like trajectory velocity that they are heading towards, you know what I mean, the impact, and I'll, I'll back it on off. Uh, each of these comes with upgrades, so things like fitness, uh, being better at sprinting, being better at sneaking, being a little bit stronger. Uh, the carpenter is usually the carpenter and the construction worker and the repairman are the ones that I normally recommend for new players because this game does have a building system that is like integral to kind of the experience of playing the game. Like you're going to have to build stuff. You're going to have to. Eventually the food is going to run out and you're going to need to by that point have a compound that you've built that you're farming inside of and collecting water and all that kind of fun stuff. And so just something to think about. And I think that the bonus points to carpentry that you get by playing these classes down here will make the transition smoother for you as a new player. Uh, so anyways, we'll go with, let's call it, let's do something a little bit different this time around. Where's the fire officer at? Yeah, let's go with the fire officer. We'll play it a little bit more interesting. In addition, you can take negative perks. Those will give you points that you can spend on positive perks if you want to. Uh, back in the old days, there was a lot of these that like weren't implemented yet properly. Like, so they didn't affect you as much as they were supposed to. Uh, and so you could like take them kind of free of charge and then just get a bunch of free stuff up here. It's up to you what you want to do with it. I usually just leave it kind of on its own. I don't really fiddle with these all too much down here because they all come with considerable downsides by comparison to their upsides. And, and so, you know, I mean, I mean, think some, something like something like underweight wouldn't be so bad with somebody that's got like a ton of fitness, but it will it will mess with you over the terms of the long game. And in the interest of getting started, I think I'm not going to fiddle with it too much. Uh, we can make a character out here that we can play as. I'm going to make him pasty. I'm going to make him. Well, we'll give him like a little bit of a tan. There we go. Uh, obviously, we need chest hair, the most important box. We're going to name this guy Crash. And then his last name is going to be Nasty. He'll be a dude. We've got the Fabian or the Fabian haircut. I don't really know. Oh, we can go with like a curly one too and get our Kenny G on. Yeah, dude, I'm going to do the Kenny G. We can be kind of like scruffy. Yeah, dude, let's be scruffy. Scruffy likes the apocalypse. All right, so we've got that all covered. I think we can also put them in different like animations and stuff just in case you wanted to see how that works. They recently redid all the animations, and so I think they're stoked about showing them all off. The game actually used to be 2D. Now it's 3D, but it used to be 2D back in the olden days. Let's start it on off. So here we are, inside of our starting area. Uh, so initial game priorities. I'm going to treat this a little bit like a tutorial for new players, too, so that if you do end up getting the game, you're not going to be too lost. My suggestion at the beginning is find a backpack. You get a fat reduction to the amount of weight that you're carrying if stuff is packed away inside of a backpack. In addition, you're probably going to want to find a weapon. Uh, there's a corn dog inside. I love me a corn dog, man. Corn dog is one of those simple, classic things that, like, hey, a golf club. 
It's got no durability on it. Its condition is pretty bad, but it's something for now. I mean, it's going to break after, like, one swing on a zombie. But like I said, it's something. Ooh, a digital watch. This actually matters. I'm going to put that on my wrist real fast. And if you take a look, it'll add a clock right here to the top right-hand corner of the screen. And then it'll also tell you the date, and it'll tell you what temperature it is so you can choose your clothing. Uh, we've got farming for intermediates right there. Skill books are very important in the beginning of the game. Uh, they're going to give you a flat, huge bonus to the amount of XP you get towards any any particular crafting and or other skill that you might need. Uh, they help out pretty immensely. Antibiotics inside here. Definitely throw those in my pocket real fast just in case we get bit. I'm hoping that we don't, but you never know. Project Zomboid has this tendency to go sideways on you in very, very real, unexplainable, and accidental ways. So outside, we've got zombies. You can hold down right click, and if you push out towards the edge of the map, you can use your long vision to see like where the bad guys are at and how far things are going. You can press C to go into like a sneaky mode. I don't think our character is particularly sneaky, so it's probably not going to do us a huge amount of benefit. Oh no, dude, an empty doghouse. That's so depressing. I like Dugs. Dugs are my favorite. Uh, I do think we're going to have to battle our way through all these guys over here. That zombie right there has a shotgun on his back, which is pretty cool. Pretty sure he's got a nightstick. So there's a, there's a couple of unique opportunities right here for us to gear up. Hiding behind the car real fast, but I'm going to see if I can get this dude's attention. I believe we've got his attention. Let's lay him on down to attack. You hold down right click, and then you're going to press left click. Oh, he lost me. Maybe I... Oh, it broke after one swing, huh? Well, that's not too bad. I can always just step on his head. I don't think that I can use the baseball bat. Or, I'm sorry, I don't think I can use the shotgun as a baseball bat as much as I would like to. Uh, we're going to try and knock these guys over. If you don't have a weapon in your hand, you're only ever going to be able to push over zombies and then stomp on them. So keep that in mind. And it does matter if you're stomping on their head or not. So I recommend that you do so. You, you will kill them much faster. Which one of you guys had the nightstick on you? One of you guys had a nightstick. So he's got a revolver and he's got a holster. I'm going to go ahead and take that. He's got a bulletproof vest. That's one of the newer items that's been added since the last time that I played the game, in all honesty. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that I hadn't seen, actually, until I was streaming the game on Twitch TV. Which, by the way, you should definitely hang out on my Twitch. If after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I forgot to do my spiel, dude. You can find it down below in the description. I'll have that for you so that you can check it on out and get it for yourself a double holster well shoot why do I need a single holster if I've got a double holster uh, we'll throw that on in there we've got the golf club how bad a shape is this car in there's a box of 38 bullets in there maybe I was seeing it wrong but I thought one of these guys had a nightstick on them maybe the one that had the nightstick is inside the building possibly I don't know how beat up is this car getting an early game car would actually be pretty good you press E to interact with things, so that's how you check the front hood of the car. You can do all kinds of stuff. Oh, this thing is beat, dude. Okay, this thing's pretty mangled. That's unfortunate. I wish that it wasn't mangled, but it is. And so let's not cry over spilt resources here. We can check the glove compartment. There's a West Point map. We do need that because we are in West Point. There's a pack of cigarettes. I'm going to leave that for right now. Oh, they were after an escaped prisoner. <laughs> See, and that's one of the cool things about this game is you find, like, these weird situations. Like, you'll come into a building, and there'll be, like, 30 dead zombies around it. And there'll be a guy in the corner surrounded by zombies, and, like, one or two that's alive. And he'll be laying in the corner with his brains blown all over the wall and a pistol sitting next to him. Or you'll come across this place with a bunch of cops that are zombified out front, and there's a zombified, uh, there's a zombified inmate inside the building. Like, all kinds of weird, like, emergent storyline things that happen right there that I'm just absolutely in love with. I think it's, like, super fantastic. I need his duffel bag, so we're going to risk the combat unarmed right now in order to get our hands on this doofla. Uh, there's the doofla right there. I'm going to throw that on my back, so now we have a backpack. We are halfway equipped for the early game, so that's good. Uh, there's actually multiple prisoners inside of there. Okay. Is this door unlocked? That door is not unlocked. Uh, I'm not hugely interested and trying to fight zombies inside a building without a weapon. It just feels unnecessarily risky to me. That cop made it out. He's the one that had the stick. Okay, so that's a weapon right there, and we need that. He's also got a gun on his hip. He's got that big iron. I'm going to knock him over real fast, and then we're just going to stomp on him real quick. We're going to grab the nightstick. We're going to equip that as a primary. Okay, so now we've got a weapon, which is going to make us quite a bit more deadly 
in in zombie combat here. Uh, don't underestimate just the utility of having something that you can bludge enemies with. It, it will help you kill them faster, and it will help you finish them off faster as well. He's got a screwdriver. That's a tool that we're going to need for crafting later on in the game. Uh, he's got a DE pistol. That's a 44 right there. We will 100% take that. Let's throw that on in there. We're gearing up right now. We're finding things that are useful. I am going to throw this shotgun inside of here. Is that a, that's a, yeah, it's a 12 gauge pump shotgun, so that's okay. We've also got another shotgun over here, but I'm going to take the revolver instead. Uh, guns are pretty heavy in this game, so just kind of keep that in mind. That we're going to need to find a place to bed down. The other reason why you want to have a weapon is so you can clear glass out of windows. Don't ever jump through windows that are all fractured and shattered like this. Uh, you'll get lacerations and you'll get embedded glass inside of you that'll get infected. This game is really, really in depth with regards to like the health system that exists. And so you want to remove the broken glass with your equipped weapon real fast smack it away from the frame Got you this guy's rocking on over here. He's got his sweatband on he must have been working out when the apocalypse happened He was pushing it to the limit Limit. Walk along the razor's edge. Don't look back. Just keep your head up. You can win it All right, so we've got this last guy inside of here this last lady it looks like She's also armed to the teeth, apparently. Everybody got a gun inside of here. Uh, I would consider taking all these guns and just storing them somewhere inside this house. I'm not going to take all of them because it's way too many guns, but you never know when you're going to need more down the line. We've got beta blockers over here. Those are anxiety pills. Uh, they're situational. Cooking for beginners. We definitely want that. If you see any books around that are for beginners at the beginning of the game, take those and spend the time reading them so that you can get like the 200, 300, whatever it is, percent XP boost towards getting your first couple levels out. It takes what is normally like a really, really huge slog and it turns it into like a lot less of a grind. In addition, these magazines right here, like Good Cooking or Engineer magazines, if you read these, they'll teach you new crafting recipes that can be kind of like the constituent parts that go into bigger crafts. And so you'll want to accumulate those as life goes along. Uh, I don't know if I want to wear the earrings for right now. We could check out the TV and see if there's anything on. I think first thing in the morning, if you go to Life and Living TV... Uh, you can learn, like, crafting skills and stuff. Y'all are watching Woodcraft. Yeah, I think this is the one right here. Like, if you watch this show right here, it'll give you, like, some XP towards your crafting, if I remember correctly. I don't, uh, remember specifically how it works. But, I'm pretty sure them teaching me how to put in hardwood flooring. Yeah, exactly. You can see that we just got a bunch of carpentry points. Now... Something to keep in mind is that TVs like this do make noise, and the zombies can hear it. So if you see a radio that's turned on, turn it off. You'll see from watching that show right there, that just gave us carpentry level one. It saved us a bunch of time. Like, on average, if you disassemble, like, an entire bed or, like, an entire door and, like, you know, take apart chairs and stuff, you only get a couple XP each time you do that. And so it actually streamlined the process, like, a lot. Even going from level one to level, or level zero to level one is, like, a huge upgrade. Like, you will see a difference. In it. One of the things that I really like about this game is that the things that you build reflect how good you are at it. So, for example, if you build a wooden wall at level zero, it basically looks like it's made of, like, random planks that are just patched together in no particular direction. If you build it at level one, they'll start to be standing up straight, but they'll be kind of, like, warped outwards, and there'll be bracing boards going across it. At level two, it starts to look like an actual wall. At level three, it starts to look really well put together, and, like, one thing, that's one thing that I've always found to be really immersive about the game that I've always really liked. Uh, we could try to break into a window by pressing the E key on a window. It depends on your fitness and your strength, but you can get the window open. Just be aware that any house that you break into like this, it has like a chance of having a house alarm when you breach the threshold right here. And if that happens, it's going to draw every single zombie for like 500 miles down onto you. It's going to be a bad situation. We're a little bit thirsty right here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and first we need to wash ourselves. We have zombie blood all over us. Don't ever eat or drink anything in this game while you're covered in zombie blood. It gives you a chance to get really, really sick. And that's going to, it's going to nerf your productivity pretty heavily. 
You don't want that to happen. So take the time, bathe. I know it takes a while, but you're going to have to, you can, you can speed it up with the buttons in the top right if you want to. And so there you go. We washed all the blood off of ourselves. Now we're going to wash all of our clothing very quickly. And so as you can see, there's no more blood on our clothing. Now there is glass and things laying around. Not really interested in collecting it. You can commit suicide in this game. If you feel like the end is nigh, you can drink bleach. You can cut yourself with glass, all that kind of stuff. A little bit dark, but in all honesty, like a zombie apocalypse would be kind of dark. Dark. Like, living in the refuse of a destroyed world would kind of be awful. There would be memories of how awesome everything used to be everywhere. So, like, on a certain level, I'm glad that they included stuff like that because I think you would really take some mental wear and tear trying to survive through this kind of situation, not to mention the PTSD of watching all your friends get torn apart by the ravenous undead and then you beating people's brains out, like, brutally you know, like over and over and over again every single day just to survive. I feel like it would add up. That one's down. Those two are knocked low. I'm gonna kill her, and then I'm gonna kill her. All right, so she's got a denim shirt. I actually really like the denim shirts. The denim shirts give you a decent amount of protection just in case a zombie ever gets on you. In this game, you do have protection based on like all of your body parts. So for right now, you can see that my arms and my head are not covered. If you're wearing like a turtleneck or like a long neck leather jacket, that'll fix that on up. You can wear a hard hat to cover your head or like a military helmet that you find around. I usually just pick up a hat and then just kind of like throw it on backwards. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're rocking now. I'm going to try to clear out this neighborhood, and then we'll probably stay here for tonight. I'm going to try to, like, grab all of the stuff from this area. Okay, there's definitely a zombie in here. Let me go check the backyard real fast and just kind of see what's out here. Like, I don't like it when the undead have... I don't like it when the undead have reinforcements coming. There we go. Okay, so she's down. Let's continue trucking. Uh, we've got a pencil, a jar lid right there. Nothing that I want. Uh, we've got some matches. Those will be useful much, much later, but not right now. We've got a watermelon and a peach. Those are perishable, so that's going to make a good food for tonight or tomorrow. Uh, we're also thirsty again. I haven't, I've only killed one zombie, so I'm going to take the risk on it. I don't really care. Uh, we need to find a water receptacle, too. If we can find, like, a water bottle or, or really anything to carry you know, water for us. You'll drink out of it automatically rather than having to drink manually while you're cruising around. Expert trapping, engineering magazine. I'm going to read that real fast. We already got carpentry for beginners. I don't know if we got cooking for beginners. We did. Okay, good. We'll start. We'll want to start looking for intermediate stuff once we've read all these books, but for right now, we're in decent shape. We're getting a little bit hungry. As you get hungry, your carrying capacity goes down. You get a little bit shaky. You get a little bit woozy. All that kind of stuff. Uh, let's continue going down the street. This whole area should be kind of... The game zombie population at initial spawn is kind of dictated by how much population lived in various areas of the map. And so when you're in kind of like rundown areas like this place, uh, it's much less likely that you're going to have problems. Oh, wow. There's a lot of zombies in there. That has the potential to kind of be a headache. But if I stand right here and smack them... Ah, uh, he got my legs. Well, at least I killed like half of them before he pulled that off, so I'll take it. They've got to take the time to get back up, so I should have time to kill this guy too. He's down. Okay. Uh, they're not officially dead until you see the blood splat like that, so like keep swinging until you hear like that crunchy, squishy noise. A gold necklace? Yeah, dude, I could use a gold chain. There we go. Look a little baller out here, dude. She's not using it anymore. What does she need it for? You know what I mean? Like, she's dead. She's not getting any enjoyment out of this. And I needed it for my morale, okay? I've always wanted to have a gold rope chain. And I've never been allowed to have one because life is cruel. And so, like, ooh, a can of beer. Yeah, I'll take that for sure. Let's grab that. Throw it in the duffel with the rest of our... Oh, there's more of you in here. What in the actual hell happened in this place? Why are there so many... Did you guys get, like, Omnom during, like, a house party? There's so many of you in here. There we go. So they're all down. We got another gun right here. Another variety of gun. I'll take it. That one came with its own magazine, too. I don't know if the other one had a magazine, the 44. Cooking for beginners. Expert farming. Watch out for a zombie right here. Sometimes they like to sit silent behind a door. A silver necklace with a crucifix. Okay. A little bathtub action over here. Wash myself up real fast. Oh, she knew. How does she know I was in here? Sneaky zombie. 
It's a zombie that's on her A game right there. She must have heard me moving or something inside the house. Must have got a lucky perception roll. Uh, we've got a long gold necklace right there. Obviously, we got to throw that on too. I don't know how many gold necklaces I can wear, but damn it, I'm going to try to wear as many as humanly possible. It looks like I can wear them both at the same time because they're of different lengths, so I respect that. We can also get some gold earrings right there. She's got a leather jacket on, but I prefer not to have the long one because the long one makes you hotter and makes you sweat more. And so, like, I'd, I'd rather not be sweating right now. Let's go ahead and wash up. We'll go ahead and... I'm not going to rinse up my clothing for right now. I don't see the point. I am going to drink. I, I feel like we've still got a few zombie kills left in us. And so, like, we'll worry about bathing at the end of the day. Now, a thing to be aware of is the, the power and the water are going to shut off randomly as civilization collapses. So right now, we're in the very, very early days of the zombie apocalypse where people are still, like, quarantining. They're still heading to military checkpoints. They're still basically in refugee mode and infrastructure is still intact. Like, the military is still responding right now if you listen to the radio but as time goes along listening to the radio and watching tv each day there will be less shows and there will be less radio broadcasts and in the end they'll basically just put it on a loop being like hey go to this location there's safety or whatever but we're not quite there yet how much durability do i have left on this beat stick oh actually this thing's got pretty good durability i expected it to be a bit lower than it is right now hey and it cleaved right there you gotta love that that's perfect uh, I'm not going to let them get too close. That one's dead. They're both down, so we got lucky with that push. I would like to finish them off real fast. You, you've got scissors in your guts right now. Somebody tried to go all Walker, Texas Ranger on you. All right, well, let's finish it off. Come on. There we go. Uh, I would check bodies. Bodies pretty... F I thought I heard something for a second. Bodies pretty frequently have good stuff on them in this game. Like, I would absolutely run the pockets of any bodies that you create, uh, especially as you get towards the late game. When you get to the late game and resources start to run out, uh, the zombies are the way that the developers allow you to replenish effectively your weapon stocks and, and, and your item stocks, uh, despite the fact that all of the loot containers have been drained. Uh, there's a zombie knocking on that door back there. Let's go take care of him before he breaks the glass and makes a bunch of noise. You. You. You're first. That other guy still thinks that I'm inside. Ooh, he's got a box of bullets. 9mm mag. We can definitely take that. I would recommend against using guns in this game unless you really, really have a character that knows how to use guns. So, like, if you have a character with a very high gun skill, that character should be able to kill zombies faster than the sound of a gunshot is drawing them to you. Ooh, a hand fork. We need that for farming. I'll take that. Uh, should be able to. But if you have no gun skill, you're going to be missing, like, a lot. And it's basically just going to be this ever-compounding issue of, like, more and more zombies just sort of accumulating on your last stand spot. Sometimes when I get bored, that's what I like to do is I take, like, a thousand rounds with a shotgun, and I just run around shooting a shotgun for, like, an hour and a half until eventually I get overrun and die. Uh, once I hit that boredom mode where I've, like, done everything and my playthrough is basically complete, that's normally how I end it with, like, a giant combat throwdown. But, you know. You can do what you like. It's your sandbox. See if I can get on in here. Thus far, we've been really, really lucky with the house alarms. We haven't hit a single one. Like, normally the house alarm chance, like when I was streaming this yesterday or the day before, like, we got, like, six houses in a row that all had alarms on them. It was brutal, dude. It was like the game was actively trying to kill me with no remorse. Can opener. That's one of the... A can opener is one of the underrated items in this game. Uh, I would suggest picking it up. It looks like our backpack is full. So at this point, we're going to want to decide where we want to kind of hole up for the night. Hey, open the door, please. Thank you. Are there any nicer looking houses over this way? I, I very much prefer to stay in houses that have two stories. It gives you an extra layer of cover and an extra kind of layer of doors that you can close behind you. So that if the zombies get into your house while you're trying to sleep, it gives you more chances with them banging on the walls to kind of like wake up, basically, and, and respond to the threat. Uh, this was our starting house. It does look like zombies got kind of like drawn down on top of it. My suggestion here would be that we sort of go out of our way to clear this area and kind of make it a bit safer. If we can create like a defensive perimeter around our sleeping spot, it'll be a lot less stressful tonight. However, we do have not necessarily hordes, but we do have some packs around here.
kill him off, and I think this guy's going to respond to it too. Be careful about the little crawl attack that they do if you're too close when they go over a fence. Uh, the developers added that for a reason. Back in the old days with this game, a fence or like a window was your ultimate defensive object because the zombies would keep crawling through it and they'd be prone on the ground and so you just keep spamming attack as they come through and you'd be killing like seven or eight of them at a time as you're swinging and they don't have a chance to get up on the ground off the ground because you were just beating them all. The developers added that dash right there when they're crawling, when they come over a fence or when they go through a window to knock you backwards so that they can all recover. You can still use the strategy that I just talked about if you're smart about it and you've got good timing, but it's a lot less consistent now than it used to be. Uh, we have many incoming. I didn't want to fight this pack. I would have rather not. Like, this is kind of sketchy. But, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a one-off YouTube episode. So let's not get too panicky. I would advise you as an experienced Zomboid player against fighting up and down. The isometry of the game can make it very, very difficult to judge distance up and down. Uh, try to keep enemies left and right if you can. That way you can look at the distance a little bit better between you and them. It looks like we wiped out that entire pack. There's a big one in the street right there, though. Oof. Rough situation. Rough situation. Something to think about. I don't want to deal with all those, but I think we're going to have to deal with all those. Like, I just don't feel comfortable sleeping here unless we do. Hmm. I'll give it some thought. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block is Project Zomboid, which I think is one of the premier zombie survival sandbox games if you're looking for realism. And you're looking for a game that's really kind of going for Cataclysm DDA, but with a little bit more presentational aspects added to it. Uh, it's a game that is really, really difficult, so don't get discouraged if you end up losing or dying a lot when you start playing. Uh, but it is a really, really fun game, and I would caution you that, like, dying is a part of the experience. It wasn't wasted time playing Zomboid as long as you learned something and you analyzed the situation that led to your demise to find a counter. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for stopping on in. How you doing? Take care, everybody.